This is one of my abstract paintings. And to me, this expresses the, that sense of peacefulness and spaciousness that I felt so strongly in these places in Kenya where there's nothing. We just get that wonderful quiet. I hadn't got into my earthy phase when I painted this picture. This is not really about my life in Kenya. This is really about its grandeur and its, its more rugged places. This is a recently completed series of desert paintings. I have deliberately given these bands of a different colour, texture, da, 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 to give the sense of somebody flying over. It does give a, a sense of being aerial. These little marks are the, are the kind of things that I sort of remember from those flights of mine from Nairobi to Mombasa. Sort of dry river beds, maybe a little bit of um, a hill, um, possibly these I've found in, in all, of, all of my memories, there are these strange sort of roundish marks in a different colour to this rather sandy um, background that I use. To me, it looks African and it looks rugged. And as far as I'm concerned, that's enough. Um, up here, you'll see that I've used my pine needles and again, the use of salt there. To my great surprise, I realised quite recently that the colours of my paintings reflect the collection I have. Just looking at them gives me a terrific boost. It's like a sort of medium, an attachment to the landscape. I can't cope with bright colour at all. I only use uh, six colours, in fact. This is how I start building up textures and colours and things. And just as a matter of interest, I love doing this. I think that yellow is a little bit insipid. So I'm going to add a little bit of zing to it with this uh, method of mine, which is using mould and sea salt. There's a little bit of tissue paper in there, which is also making a strange... I, I could let it make its own pattern because it tends to do that. But actually, I really, really want to show this method because it's more or less my signature. Anybody who sees paintings with this salt in know that it's mine. So you go sprinkle, 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 sprinkle. And you can see already the texture beginning to appear. Uh, unfortunately, it has an irritating tendency to get lighter at the corners, but you can go back and touch that up later. Having put on the, um, the salt wash, I realise that something's got to go. There's a square there, a square there, a square there, and compositionally that doesn't work. The colours are very muted at the moment. Um, they're just um, kind of nothing. But when they get built up, they'll become more exciting. I need to get some of the, the moisture off them. Could almost be like little tributaries and things. Could almost be like little tributaries and things. I have introduced quite a lot of ochre, and I, I wasn't quite sure whether the colours were ochreish when I flew over from Nairobi to Mombasa. But curiously, my brother gave me a most beautiful book by a, an aerial photographer called Jan Artus Bertrand, and um, had, had wonderful aerial photographs. And his wife did the text in collaboration with the famous flying doctor Anne Spurry, who was a friend of mine. In the text, they talk about the laterite in the earth and how it gradually uncovers the soft colours underneath the soil. So it sort of fitted in and endorsed, if you like, what I'm doing. And I was quite pleased about that. Um, you have to make up what I, all this is from memory. Um, but it's nice to know that um, it was actually sort of pinkish in colour, and that's why all my paintings are.